I hope will come true, all right? <laughs> Bless the name of the Lord. Praise God. Anyway, um, I just have a little summary the way I looked at Acts chapter 27. As I've written um, on the first slide, you might not be able to read it. It's Paul's journey to Rome, the similarity to our life's journey. Um, and looking at most of the activities throughout has been happening in Turkey, how the gospel was massive and powerful in that land. And look at the state of the land now. So things that we have to look at and learn from what we're reading and how things change if we move away from the path of righteousness. Amen. So I'll give a little bit of summary before we read uh, the chapter. The, the word of God says um, in John 14, verse 1, man that is born of a woman is of few days and is full of trouble. And just looking at how Saul's life uh, is full of many challenges. Amen. I'm sure he brought so much trouble to many people, but we can just see an example of our lives there. That's what I was looking at. Um, he's about, he's had about five trials tried before. Um, he was first tried before the crowd. Remember when he went to Jerusalem in um, Acts chapter 20. 22 there, when he came from the temple and they thought that um, he had taken a Gentile, <laughs> Trophimus, his name was, into the temple and the people wanted to slaughter him, to kill him. And they were beating him and he was rescued. As the captain was taking him off, that was the commander Lysias. Lysias, as he was taking him up to his garrison, then Paul says, just hold on, let me talk to the people. And as he started speaking to the people in Aramaic, they started listening to him. And when he mentioned somewhere in his preaching, the Gentiles, the God might, and they were just to kill him. It's not supposed to live. The commander rescued him, um, took him in. And then they, after that, he brought him before the, the Sanhedrin council. As he was speaking, you remember how the Ananias, the high priest, told somebody to slap him on the mouth or to hit him on the mouth. And Paul called him a whitewash sepulchre. <laughs> yeah. So he was tried before the Sanhedrin. And then um, in this next trial, the Lysias like sent him to Caesarea to Felix. Now, Felix called the, the chief, the chief um, and then as the high priest came there with the lawyer, Tertullus. Remember that other one that we were dealing, looking at with Tertullus. And then Paul had to defend himself again. And then Felix asked him a funny question. He says, oh, do you want to go to Jerusalem to be tried? Was it Felix who said that? No, no, it wasn't Felix who said that. It was it. It was Festus. But Felix kept him there for two years, having come in with his wife, even now listening to him, but never wanted to release him because we saw that he was the corrupt man and wanted to be bribed. After Felix was removed from his post, um, Festus came to that post. Now Festus also traveled to Jerusalem and they told him that they wanted him to bring Paul down there. He refused, he says he will be tried in Caesarea. And then they came back up again to try Paul. Amen. And then Festus asked, trying to produce that the Paul want to go to Jerusalem. Paul knew that his life was the stake. And then Paul says, no, I, I'm going to the emperor's court. While there, um, he was King Agrippa and Bernice came. And Festus wanted to get something to, to send to the emperor. So he called Agrippa to listen to him. So he's gone through about five state of trials with many people condemning him. And I'm thinking, yes, Lord, 
Sometimes we get through many trials in life, but it's only the Lord that keeps us and keeps us true. So we're singing this song, He Made the Way. So I just want to, as we're going through, to look at how we've come through many situations, but how God has brought us through. So Paul petitioned that he wants to be tried before the emperor himself. And now in chapter 27, it's going to be shipped to Rome. That's where we're going to look at it. I'm not going to say much now because I was just laying down that foundation that we can look at. Amen. 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 Was that, Amen. Was that, in, was that helpful? Yes. yes, sir. Even if it wasn't, you would say so. <laughs> it was. I know. I know. Just joking. I'm waking up now. Don't worry. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Brother Daniel. Yeah. Are you there, sir? Can you read yeah. from us from that? So we're going to see now, Paul, how he's going to travel to Rome and how this journey to Rome was one of something else. I'm not going to say much about that because then we're going to answer some questions after that. So you will be talking now. I'll finish my talking. I won't talk much again. <laughs> Ask <laughs> <laughs> chapter 27. Can you read to verse 26, Brother Daniel, for us, please? And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul up to verse 27, did you say? Or 26? 26. Okay. Acts chapter 27, read from 1 to 26. Okay. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus band, mentoring into a ship of Adramitium, we launched meaning to sail by the coast of Asia. One Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon. And Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh him. So, and when he had launched from thence, we sailed unto, under Cyprus because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the sea of Sicilia, oh, Cilicia, sorry. Just, just stop there for a minute, sorry. Um, because here is a map. So I don't know if you can see it well, from Jerusalem to Caesarea, you see the red line? Yes. Yeah. How they travel. Yeah. And it will show you the different ports where they stop. So continue, brother. And when he had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, the city of Lazio. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. For memory had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against Sinidus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed on the creek over against Samoa, and hardly passing it came onto a place which is called the Fair Haven. Nigh whereunto was the city of Lassio. Now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lab, laden and ship, but also our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion <coughs> believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenix, and there to winter, which is an haven of Crete, and lieth toward the southwest and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosened thence, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after, there arose against it a tempestuous <coughs> wind called Euryclidon, 
And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Clodo, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, straight sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve saying, Fear not, Paul, thou, thou, must, thou must be brought before Caesar, <coughs> and lo, I have given thee all them that sell with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe, God, that it shall be even as it was told me, how be it we must be cast upon a certain island. <coughs> oh. You finished, son? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for reading. Thank you. So we're going to tackle the questions now. First question. Do you have the questions there, son? Who were in the ship? Yep, yeah, sorry. Uh, the first okay. question. The first question is who was in yeah, who was in the ship? Who oh, was the ship that sailed with Paul? How many people? Yeah. Well, he went in the ship that was heavy. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, says. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're full, we're free to answer, right? Of course, we're as a person. <laughs> and even because everyone was so silent, so I was thinking what's going on. But mm. praise the Lord. Um, no, no, they were just reflecting, sis. So you just go on. <laughs> yeah. They were eating in the words. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I've got here. The, um, so Luke was here at this yeah. time. So it's reverted back to um, first person as it says that, um, says we in verse one. And also the other prisoners were also on the ship. Um, it also sailed with Paul. And there were 276 people in total, which, which we are told in verse 37. Thank you, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Ju oh, yeah, Julius the Centurion was on the ship, as well as, um, can't say his name, starts with A, Aristarchus, Aris was also on the ship. Mm -hmm. Amen. Any other, anybody else adding? The owner, master and the owner. Mm -hmm. Master and the owner. Mm -hmm. And who else? W uh, were there soldiers? Well, there was pri prisoners. Yep, there were soldiers. Yep, and who else? Prisoners, Sailors. other prisoners. And prisoners. Yeah. And who else? Sailors. Sailors. Amen. I was waiting for that. <laughs> Sailors. Thank you for running that up. Amen. So, who were in the ship? Look, Aristarch Aristarchus. Amen. Um. Can somebody read for me Colossians 4, verse 10 to 11, please? Colossians, Colossians 4, verse 10 4. to 11. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, salute for you, and Mark, sisters, son to Barnabas, 
touching whom ye received commandments. If he come unto you, receive him. And Jesus, which is called Justice, who are of the circumcision, these only are my fellow workers <clears throat> unto the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort unto me. So it, it's comfortable that um, Paul here, it didn't just have brethren in good times, he had them also in bad, in times that there were serious things. Mm -hmm. They didn't just stay with him when things were good, but they were following him in serious journeys that their own lives were in jeopardy. So we see the support from Zion, how essential it is. Um, some, some writers think that Timothy was also in the ship because as they stopped in certain places to drop them off, but no way is kind of mentioned there, but, but um, some people <coughs> mentioned that. Oh, can you give us sister some water, please? Praise the Lord. Amen. So uh, most of the Meshian men were Egyptians, also the sailors, because the ship was coming from Egypt, taking grain to, to, um, to Italy. We talked about the ship owner and 276 souls. Well done, you. Well done, everybody. This is a good night. Praise the Lord. Question number two. Where is Adramatium, Sidon, and Snidus located today? Yeah, some of those places are mentioned. So we need to know these names and where they are so that we know we're not talking about the Mars, we're talking about S. It's happening right here. Adramatium, Sidon, and Snidus. Where are they located today? That's just a geography question. In modern Turkey. day Turkey. Pardon, please? Modern day Turkey. Modern day Turkey. All of them? Uh -huh. No, just the first and the third. Yeah. Just the um, first and the third. Yeah. 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 Can't pronounce it. And Sidon was in Lebanon. Yeah. Lebanon. Uh, Lebanon. Yep. Sidon in Lebanon. And you see, Lebanon that used to produce all those. Good trees. Yeah. It's a graveyard now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How terrible times of change. Thank you all. Um, question number three. Who was Julius and what do you think of him? Your personal thought about Julius. Um, he was the captain of the Imperial Regiment if I pronounce that correctly. And he was assigned to oversee Paul and the other prisoners. Um, I, I, I wrote here at this point, as in um, from verse three, I believe, um, I would consider him as a nice person because he allowed Paul to visit his um, friends. And um, I got here that this could be because of Paul's Roman citizenship that um, which, which may have given him privilege. Thank you, Sister Alicia. Top marks. Who else can add something to that? What do you think about him? I think he was Italian. Mm -hmm. Any more? I think everything. Everything Alicia said was right. Yeah. I read somewhere <clears throat> that he was uh, probably a freed man of the Julian or Caesarian family. Um, because okay. they usually carry, carry the, the master's name. <clears throat> can you hear me? Sorry. My, we can hear I'm you talking. well. We can hear you well. Okay, what have I written down? Oh, I didn't even show you the second one because you said it. Um, Adramitium, that's the last said question. I'm at. It's a port on the northwest corner of Turkey. Sidon was a port in what is Lebanon today. Snyder's a port in the southwest tip of modern day Turkey. Mm. Uh, who was Julius? 
and what do you think of him? This is what I've written about him. Uh, can somebody read Psalms 106, 46, please? Psalms 106, verse 46, if you find it. Psalms 106, verse 46 reads, He made them also to be pitied, pitied of all those that carried them captives. He made them also to be pitied of all those who carried them captives. In one sense, um, God always places sometimes people who look, um, who look after his people, who were under him, we see, we see um, Joseph, when he was sold in Egypt, his masters look, looked after him well. When he was prisoned, they looked after him. So God always has a place that he puts people to watch over his own when they are in captivity to look after him. So thank God for those cares that he has for his people. Yeah, a centurion of the Augustan Regiment or Augustan Cohort. So the Augustan Cohort is an honorary title given to more than one legion of the Roman army, implying perhaps that they acted as bodyguard to the emperor or the procurator as the occasion required. Um, six regiments of cohorts comprised of a Roman legion. That's just um, kind of thing. He bore the responsibility of delivering all the prisoners to Rome without loss, because if he lost them, his head will be gone. So mm -hmm. that's a tough job. You lose them, you are dead, man. Jesus was kind to Paul, probably some people said, because Paul wasn't well physically. That's why he allowed it to, to, to visit his friends so that he could have some um, treatment or that he trusted Paul to. Um, is, um, other people said, commented, or says, Julius most likely knew about his character either from knowing or hearing about Paul, who had been at the Roman Praetorium in Caesarea for two years because this guy was stationed there. He could have heard some of the trials and he would have known about Paul. So mm -hmm. he was kind and looked after him. Praise the Lord. Just adding to the wonderful information you've given. Amen. So we need um, good tax masters also. Praise the Lord Jesus. Although there was a one that was not too good in Egypt, but God, God was about to take the mother that time. Praise the Lord. Um, where are we? That's question number four. Why were the winds described <coughs> as contrary? So I will bring down the map so that when you're describing it, then that will help again. Why were the winds described as contrary? Well, this, it, it, oh. hello, God bless Brother Humphrey, Pastor. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Um, they were described as contrary because um, they actually wanted to sail the ship from the west and then on to the south. But the wind was so strong and it was sending them north by the Syrian coast. Then they went west along the coast of Sicilia, then Pamphylia, and then, sorry, I can't read my own writing, the last one, Lycia, <laughs> is it? So they, the wind was contrary. It was going against the way that they wanted to go. It was taking them in in another direction. Yeah. Any other person wants to add something? No. I thought I thought it was a um, northeast wind, and they wanted to go northwest. I I, I wasn't sure about the south there because. When you look at the Mediterranean, it was coming in against them. So I, I agree with the contrary. It's going against the way they want to go. Yeah. So it's against mm -hmm. their sail. But I thought it was the east-west was the problem, not the north-south. I don't know. So, uh, I mean, if we look at how it goes along the coast there, that's the way going along the coast there, 
if they left from Caesarea, it would have been shorter to travel. Can you see the pen? Yeah. It would be quicker to have just caught across like that yeah, and yeah. gone to Crete. Yeah. And gone all, they, they didn't really have to go, but they had to go to certain ports, but not all of those. But because of the wind, the journey became longer. Because yeah. it would have been shorter to go, that's why they said go south of Cyprus. Or what you talk about um, Cyprus, traveling by the south here instead of going towards the north of Cyprus, they would just have cut across. So the wind was just pushing them on the on the, on the other side. But it's, it's, it's funny that as the wind moved them towards the other side, then Paul had the occasion also to, to visit some brethren and they also looked after him. So in that sense, I'm yes. saying sometimes the winds might be contrary to our lives, but God always puts Paul there for, for support for us, yes. to care for us during that time. So even if you're going through some contrary winds, know that God is with you. He will take you through. Mm. It will take you through. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying this kind of tells us about our journey in life. Contrary winds, they always blow when you have your plans and then they just dislodge everything. You just have to look to God about which way to go. So he makes the way. Yes. Amen. Oh, what? Can I just start question, please? Yeah. Just don't worry. Because I was trying to... I really don't know my north and my east and my west and my south when, it, when I'm looking at maps. But I, so I was trying to work out what... Um, so the red bit is the direction that the wind forced them forced them yeah. to take? Is that, that, that's how they, yeah, right. the red bit is how they travel. So they that's have, where the wind forced them, right? Yeah, they could have just cut across like that. It would have been shorter. So they could have... That. Okay, I yeah. get you. They could have gone straight across. To, because, yeah. yeah, straight across like that. And then mm -hmm. through that way. To right. Great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Make, For use in the land to shelter. Yeah. yeah. Yes, the, the right. Yeah, I understand that. Okay. okay. Any other I, thoughts? I think that's a lovely thought, though, Pastor, because... Um, things might be contrary to our will, but never contrary to God's will. No. Amen. No. Amen. Amen. Uh, just, oh, sorry. Can I just add? Go on. <clears throat> add, please. Um, so it seemed that, so they were out, you know, they were not in control of what was happening. The wind was carrying them. But yet God was in control. Amen. 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 God was in control. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Because he is always <clears throat> in control. The oh. next question. Sorry, excuse me. What fast was over and what was Paul's advice? How was his no, okay, let's answer that first bit. What fast was over and what was Paul's advice? Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Lord. Was, um, so the fast that was over was um, the day of atone, atonement. Mm -hmm. So this is also known as Yom Kippur. Yom and this Kippur. Was Yom, Yom Kippur. Yeah. Um, this was the um, Jewish holy day where they fast pray abstain from physical pleasure and refrain from work. Um, what was Paul's advice? His advice was that if they continue to go on the, the direction that they were going, that there would be a lot of trouble ahead. Um, not only that the ship and everything in, in it will be destroyed, but also their lives. Mm. Um, you said just answer those two questions. You no, know, we can move to the next one. How was his um, advice received? Um, and what can we learn from that? What I got from this was that um, it was not received well as um, Julius listened, listened more to the pilot than to Paul. And um, I got here that at times, because of your position, you may not be heard as you would like. Um, so what we can learn... So what I mean by this here is that because Paul was a prisoner, is that like, who is Paul to them? 
and is in the sense that because there's like captains the pilot whoever's like driving the um, ship they're gonna more listen to them probably in a sense they may have knowledge in where they're going and Paul is just a prisoner to them that they're holding captive so they're not gonna they, they haven't got time to listen to them so just in that sense his position so what we can learn from that that not all the time that we should look at a person um look at a person because of their position their position but what they say that that was just my little take on it I was a big Texas thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> it's not a little take thank mm -hmm. you Praise the Lord. Anybody wants to add what the, the, the girl from it, please? This is where you get inspirations also. I didn't feel that it was because of Paul's position, like he didn't respect him, because I think he has shown respect to Paul. But, um, you know, Paul wasn't a sailor. <laughs> you know, and let's be honest, if you're on a ship, and you've got the master and the owner of the ship, and um, it's not the first voyage they're taking, um, you're in a situation where you already have a situation where sailing was dangerous. I think, to be honest, you're going to go with who you think the expert is. And Paul, well, at that point, was not proven to be an expert. <laughs> Any other addition? Thank you, Sister Pam. Um, okay, let's see what we have here. We talked about that. Okay, the first was um, on the Day of Atonement, the end of September or the beginning of October. And, and one of the things that I see here is to see how rough winter period was. Mm -hmm. Winter period was very rough. So, so you, you, you begin to see the, the, the contrariness when you begin, people begin to say Jesus was born in December because you can't have shepherds out of the field in that period. See just October and September what they were facing already when they hadn't even come to the deep December just to, to, to put that in. Um, Paul says, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only to the cargo and ship, but also our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than by the things spoken by Paul. So who would you have believed a prisoner to the trades people? Um, I don't think if I'm in a plane and, and, and we're going to America and then there's a problem in Greenland, somebody there says, please just land in Greenland. I was not a pilot. I don't think I want to listen to you. <laughs> Whether you're a prophet or who, I, I would just say, please leave it to the hands of the expert. So I would do what he did. I ain't going to listen to Paul. <laughs> Bless the Lord Jesus. Let's just be honest with that one. I mean, Paul said, I've traveled this route many times. They will tell you, we travel in the ship many times. You travel as a passenger. We, we sail the boat. Yeah. So I would have done what they did. Pastor Humphrey. Yes, ma'am. Can I just ask a question then? Of course. When Paul gave the um, advice that he gave, mm. do you think that that was based on his own um, ordinary thoughts or do you think that was based on some words of wisdom from the Lord? I personally think it was based on his travel around the places. So he knew um, the seasons and the times and the dangers. He had experienced some troubles there as, as he had traveled first second missionary journeys. So he knew the area. Yeah, yeah. So that was from his own knowledge, I would say. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't say if the angel of the Lord told him so, it would well, be his, yeah. his knowledge. Further on, it does speak of that, but that's a way on. That's not this bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Further on, it does. We have some other stuff. And also okay. to add, sorry, just to, to add, uh, what I read from my study that the Romans preferred not to like even sail during these times, just according to knowing the the climate. 
that they would have traveled like um, after mid September because mm-hmm. of all this that was going on, the winds and the storm. So yeah, just going off what Pastor said of knowledge of knowing the time. Yeah, we're coming to talk about that wind now. <laughs> can, can I just, <laughs> Pastor, can I just say, um, when I look at the word in verse 10, I perceive. I yeah. think, um, I, I, I don't think he's saying, thus saith the Lord, but I think he is saying that I, I discern that this isn't right. Mm. But I think he's speaking not just maybe head knowledge, but I think he's speaking by the spirit. I, I, I just feel that way. He says, I perceive, um, which is like, yeah. I don't know. For me, it's more than I, I, I can feel it in my waters, as people say sometimes. You know? I don't know if you've heard that phrase before. <laughs> Um, what, what, what was the phrase? <laughs> I don't know what to say it again. Yes, just got right. Tiffa Leslie nodded. I know, I know. I can feel it in my waters. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah is, this, is it a very English saying? I think it might be, Sister Pam. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't want it to be misconstrued. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I think, you know, I think he's talking about his discernment yeah. and perception. But yeah. then, but then we see later on. Anyway, I won't go into later because yeah. we're gonna get there. Yep, we can go into later. We can walk forward. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let Let's work no, no. with you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's work with you. Uh, next, any other person before we go to the next question, which is an interesting one now. What is a Eurocladon or Cladon? Does your Euclidean still arise in the Mediterranean Sea? Yes, he yeah. says, I read. <laughs> yeah. I read, yes, it's still, it's still um, arise in the Mediterranean Sea. And I read that it's an eastern wind which blows in the Mediterranean Sea. And in some places, people describe it as a typhoon or a hurricane. Cyclone. Um, and they use some, I've read there was, um, in, in this modern day, it is called um, Regali. Regali. Is that how you pronounce it? Oh, I've, I've got Levan, Levantis or something like that. Yes. I got that as well, but Gregory, yeah. I don't know. So, and this wind occurs mainly in the autumn and the winter, which is again comes back to that knowledge that you say that Paul had of the seas. Amen. Anything to add? Yeah, I've got here. I've got here that um, that that word is part Greek and part Latin. And the word means east wind and north wind. East, yes. Yeah, I've got northeast, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, Euroclidon or Cleden, or whatever you want to pronounce it, was the name given to a violent wind that can suddenly blow across the Mediterranean Sea. Rokadon blows from northeast to the southwest and invariably during the fall. Oops. Oops. What's going on here? During the fall and winter months, this is American thing for, mm-hmm. for autumn. Eurocladon was a hurricane or a cyclone, which used, used to be mentioned, a typhoon so that caused the ship so suddenly and violently that they couldn't even turn the ship around and head into the wind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, called Grigel or the other name. Oh. So the next question is here. I should have asked it too. What is the Seti Sands? I put all of them in one slide. Did you hear the question? Yeah. Said what what were Seti Sands? We agree with your answer. Yes, because I couldn't find any reference to it. <laughs> Pardon? 
I couldn't find a, a reference to it. I, I thought it was some kind of quicksand of some sort, but I couldn't yeah. I couldn't find anything about it myself. Um what I got here, um I don't know if I'm right, but just from no, research. Just go where you got this. <laughs> oh, okay, because it's, it's it's I think it's just a little bit different, maybe I don't know. Anyway, citrus sands are shallow gulfs of the um of the coast of Africa. I don't know if that's true. I don't know. Um, the reason why um, <laughs> you're laughing. Oh, oh my god, am I wrong? No, I'm not laughing because you're wrong. I'm you just say laughing because you're saying I don't know. But just that's all you found out. So that's all I say. <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't want to read the rest now. No, no, go on. It's your research. <laughs> I go here. Um, the reason why the men on the ship were afraid of this, um, afraid of this, was because the ship could um, struggle in shallow seas choked up by seaweed. Once um, beyond the sandbar, return, um, returning to the open sea was nearly impossible, and dangerous rocks along the coast could prevent them from arriving safely to shore. Yeah, good answers, Sid. Good answers. That's kind of thing that I got like you. <laughs> the sea sands were the sandbars uh, behind the lake quick. So behind those sandbars on the shore, the quick sands were up before after that. So if the ship was blown too much, then you get into quick sand, you'll not be able to come out. Yeah. So it was kind of a trap place that you didn't want to end up in. Mm. If you if your ship was <laughs> got there, you're all you're all gone. Yeah. They're all gone. And these rocky shores are um, lined most of the northern coast of, of Libya and Tunisia. There's a great patch there that, that those, those sands occupy. If you get beyond that, you, you are doomed. <laughs> you are gone. So they didn't want to get into it. Those are all technicalities. Um, so let's get into a bit of the meaty bit. The next question, yeah, this one is a free, your thoughts about it. And it's a long stretch for us to comment on. Comment on the situation from uh, verse 18 to 32. We've not even read, read up to verse 32. So brother, brother Daniel, brother Daniel, are you there, sir? Brother Theo? Yeah, I'm here. Oh. I thought you disappeared. No, he's here. Daniel's here. Okay. Can oh, you read? Because that, that goes up to verse 32. We, we stopped at verse 26. Could you just read the, the other, the second part of it, please? To the end. The rest of it? Yes, sir. The rest of it. Yeah. But when the 14th night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adriot, about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country and sounded and found it 20 fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it 15 fathoms. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea under colour, as though they would have cast anchors out of the ship. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And we were in all the ship, we, and we were in all in the ship, Two hundred, three score and sixteen souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore. 
into the which they were minded if it were possible to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves onto the sea and loosed the rubber bands and hoisted up the main sail to the wind and made towards shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground and the fore part stuck fast and remained unmovable. But the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' council was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion willing to save Paul kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they all, that they escaped all safe to land. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the reading of the mm -hmm. word. Amen. So our question again now, this is your thoughts and meditation on the scripture. Um, comment on the situation from verse 18 to 32. What lessons can we learn from it? So this is a free will answer. What did you get from it? Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, Sister Paula, good to hear you. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Um, but I agree with everything. I got the answers, them, and I really agree with everything so far. But um, this free, um, he said what we get from what we're hearing so far. I think that is um, God na um, na nature does... Uh, doesn't change just as he declare above of God he also um, he always loving merciful compassion generous great sorry gracious holy and just uh, what uh, and just what do I what do what just what do you mean? What do change? <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> he's disturbing me. Yeah, what you take your change? time. Okay, so all right. So basically, um, sorry, God plan um plan is um res respond to our re rebellions uh, and obedience and prayer. For example, if we sin, God relate on his planning and blessing. So he bless us, although we sin, we can repent of our sin and uh, he's always there for us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Amen. Paula. Uh, I have some, another thought, please. Um, I don't know if anyone was to Sister Pat, was you gonna say something? Sister Alicia, you just talk. <laughs> you don't worry go, about what you go, go, sweetheart. Go I'm, I'm allowing others to go. I'll I'll fill in blanks if necessary. Don't hold back. Okay. So what I've got um that um God spoke to Paul, telling him that there is no need to be afraid because he will stand before Caesar and everyone else in the ship will live. However, the ship will be destroyed. So just essentially what we can learn from here is tr trusting in what God tells us because he knows all things and he knows everything that is ahead of us. Um, also having faith and believing in what he has said and listening to God because it's a two way conversation. Um, also, at the end, not at the end of the verse, but I think in 31 and 32, some of the sailors tried to secretly escape the ship, but Paul said to them that if they do leave the ship, then they will die. So we can go here that you can't really go against what God has already said because God already know that like God already said that um like they're all gonna live, like Paul's gonna see Caesar. So even them doing that, like God would have known that Paul was going to say something to them in order for them not to leave the um, ship. So that's just my take on it. 
Thank you, sis. Another person? I was encouraged that um, in poor situation, um, he's able to encourage others because he, 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 he was going through his own, his own storms. Um, but while going through that, he didn't focus on himself and he was able to encourage others, um, you know, to be of good cheer. Yeah. And um, what I also Man. liked is that God will use anyone because God used, it said somewhere that all these men are with you because he had to go to Rome. So I can't, remember, I can't find the verse. So God will use any, any person to accomplish his will in your life. Um, yeah, those are two of my thoughts. Thank you, thank yes, you, sis. I've got a couple of thoughts. Yes, ma'am. Um, the one is the one is a bit of a, a light-hearted comment, but the others do get very serious. So my light-hearted comment is: I definitely think it's not the best time to have a Mediterranean cruise. So I mm. shall remember <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, be warned. <laughs> um, okay. So the other thing, I, I, uh, how, to, how to start this, the, I promise I won't be long. There's um, a part of me that I can, I can understand where Paul was coming from in verse 21, where it says that he actually took a long time before he said anything to them. It says after long abstinence, you know, um, and yes, they were fasting, but I think he was also thinking, I don't know if I'm going to be saying anything to these people again, because um, I've already um, spoken to them and they didn't sort of believe me. So I, I, I just feel like he was holding himself back, but until he had that vision or dream, whatever you want to call it, until the angel of the Lord spoke to him, that that night, then the next day he was able to say to them very clearly what um, that they should have listened to him. Now, this is goes back to what I wanted to say earlier, but held back. One of the reasons why I didn't think it was just his own head knowledge or thoughts was because when he said, I perceive, and then he says now to them, um, listen, you really, you should have listened to me. Mm. You know, but it wasn't just I told you so, I know, I know, but it was more he was he was trying to get them to understand that he was not speaking of himself. And so the advice he was now giving, he wanted them to realize it was of God. And when he said the angel of God um, had spoken to him, I think I don't know, he just wanted that to to them to see that it was God that was vindicating what he had said before, that they shouldn't have um, pressed on in the way that they did. And the personal bit that I, I'm learning in terms of that is that I know of myself, I, I don't often like to tell somebody the same thing twice, um, so it's just personal me. I feel maybe like, okay, if they don't want to receive it, maybe just leave it alone rather than go back to them and say something. You're being a bit of a, a bully or a pain in the neck or whatever. Um, and I remember saying to the Lord when I was young in the Lord, Lord, please don't let me um, weary you and you have to keep telling me the same thing again and again and I think that's because I don't necessarily like that so it's interesting I'm just learning here and thinking maybe that comes from a lack of patience or whatever but I'm not saying Paul was impatient I'm just reflecting and looking you said what lessons can we learn and I'm just trying to self-reflect that's enough <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Sister Humphrey. Um, no, if you see how more will listen, it's interesting. <laughs> sorry? 
What? Um, yes, I was looking at this and I thought that um, Paul, he did use this opportunity after he had seen the um, vision of the dream. He used it to witness to them um, so mm -hmm. that they, even if they didn't know before, I felt that he was really outlining, look, this is my stance. This is where I'm coming from. This is who I am. And I think that he was used as so often I believe we can be used in areas where there people feel that there's a, a crisis or something is going very wrong or something is very negative because a couple of times he speaks about be of good cheer and given that they were fasting probably their spirits were a bit low you know how sometimes when you're fasting you can feel a bit weak and a bit lacking in strength and it plays then on the mind and I think that Paul maybe was really trying to even though he recognized that they hadn't followed what he had initially said he, he didn't allow that to um cloud his judgment of them he still continued to say be of good cheer come on we we can do it because I know that my God has told me this and this and he told them that and I would have thought that that would have in the situation they were in that would have been quite comforting to hear that this man was speaking so positively about what his God was doing and would do for them. So I think he was in a position that um, gave him a good opportunity to witness what the Lord was saying to him. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Any, praise the Lord. Sorry, Pastor, you were going to say something. No, no. I said, I wanted to say any other, Sister V. Come oh. on. <laughs> Got to hear yeah, you. I, I think Ms. Minister uh, Stewart said some of what I was going to say. Um, praise the Lord. And just our sister just gone there. But I think the fact that all throughout Acts, you know, Paul, after his meeting with um, with the Lord on, on, on the road, you know, and how the God, even though there was people with him, it was him that heard from God, God was speaking directly to him. And throughout Acts, we hear how Paul is always rehearsing this, saying how he met with the Lord. And I think this was just another, and because he'd had so many encounters, personal encounters with God and heard from God and knew who he was called to be. And the fact that God had told him what he was gonna do, who he was going to meet. So when he stood up and said, you know, he'd, he'd met with the angel of the Lord who told him you know, the ship might be lost, but none of you will be lost because there's still something more for me to do. And because of that conviction and, you know, going back to uh, what was said earlier, and I think I even said it on Sunday, the fact we have to just believe God, just, just take him at his word, even if we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. If God has said it, he's going to bring it to pass. So the fact that he'd included them in this, he said, I have to pre be presented, you know, before Caesar, and so I'm telling you, because I've got to meet this path, I have got to go down this road and God has told me none will be lost. Yeah, so he, because of, and I think it comes down to our conviction, you know, because I think people can tell whether we're convicted or not, whether we believe what we're saying or not, whether we believe the word of God. It's not just something we say, it's something we actually believe yeah. we are convicted of. And I think his conviction helped to steady the rest of the men. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sis. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Any other? Oh, they've all said what was in your own mind or your thoughts. And probably also what I have written down. So I might skip that. I don't even show you what I wrote down. We'll go to the next one. Pastor. Yes. Can I just ask a quick question? Sorry. Yep. Just very quickly, just I'm just going a bit back, um, back a bit. You know, it says because the fast has not really passed, and the fast that they were doing was the day of at at atonement. Atonement. Yeah, and that's that's a Jewish fast. But Paul is no longer Jewish, right? So why has that? Is that a fast that did they particularly done that fast? The people that were on the ship, or was it just as? that day as a country or wherever they were it was just a day of fast if you get what i mean 
I get what you mean. Let me just go back to one of the things you said. What you said, Paul was no longer Jewish. What do you mean by that? Oh, no, I just thought that um, he, he was born as a Jew, right? If I'm correct. Mm -hmm. But um, what I'm trying to say is I mm -hmm. thought he was no, I don't know, his faith no longer lies in the Jewish religion and his faith is in now and he is a believer of Jesus Christ. He is, he is a believer of Jesus Christ, but he didn't really um, knock away the traditions because some traditions, were they are still good to, to uphold, that's kept them. And if we see um, when he went to Jerusalem, he, he was doing some vows with some people in the temple. So he was still practicing. It doesn't mean that he didn't know about salvation, but he was always trying to let the Jewish people know that he knows their custom, mm. but the Messiah mm. has come to take them above that. Mm. Oh, okay. So he was still a Jewish man and he would tell you that I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. He would tell you that. That was not a Gentile, he was a Jew. Okay. okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. so he, and he was going, uh, before we reached here, you remember he was saying that he wanted to keep the, the Feast of Pentecost in Jerusalem. He wanted to meet that. So he was working with some of the traditions, not so much about the traditions, but to draw his people from traditions to the spiritual reality of the Messiah. And if he came out totally out of that, then they will not be able to hear him. So I see some wisdom that he uses. He uses great wisdom. And I think um, as... Um, Mr. Stewart also have been saying with um, um, Dickness Chandler, how we use wisdom in this point. Did I answer your question? Yeah, no, that's that's fine. Thank you, Pastor. That's good. Thank you, Pastor. No, I asked, did I answer your question? Because I'm thinking I did just answer half of it. Did no. I answer all the full of it? Yeah, no, that, that was fine because that's what I just wanted to know that why, because I just thought that, okay, that he's a Christian and um, he's no longer Jewish. So why is he doing a Jewish fast? So I was just a bit confused about that because we, we don't do okay. that today, but is that it's, because we're not Jewish, we're not Jews. So we won't do that. But can I just say, Sister Alicia, we were never Jews. Um, we are West Indians. We have West Indian traditions. Africans have African traditions. Some Europeans have European traditions. Um, just because we're saved, we don't stop being um, Jamaican or West mm. Indian or British or Jewish. So, you know, it's, I think what you're mixing is Judaism. So yeah. I, I came out of Catholicism. I was a Roman Catholic by religion. And I came out of that. Um, prayer is still good. So if Catholics pray, I don't have a problem with that. I'll still pray. But the reading of the rosary and the beads and things is definitely idolatry. So I wouldn't do that. So mm -hmm. Paul was still able to be a Jew because that was his nationality. That was his birth um, nation, right? but he came out of Judaism in terms of the things that conflicted with Christianity. But if there was no conflict in terms of keeping yourself clean and washing your hands before you eat, um, he, he didn't have a problem with um, mm -hmm. some of the customs and traditions of the Jews. Does that no, help? No, it does, no, it, no, yeah, it was, yeah, thank you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can, you said no. Can I just, yeah. just, oh, yeah. can I just... <laughs> No, I said yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Sister, Pat? Sister Pat here. Can I just read a scripture just to um, add yes. to that? Um, yes, First Corinthians um, nine, where it says, "For unto the Jews I became as a Jew." that I may gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law. Just in terms of what um, Pastor was saying that um, in order to, to win the Jews, there were some things that Paul continued to do because he says here, 
on onto the Jews. I became as a Jew. What verse is that? Sorry, Sister Pat. Yeah. What verse were you reading? First Corinthians, First Corinthians nine, um, verse twenty. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the concrete evidence, Sister Pat. Thank you. Okay, let's um, see that quickly because we're getting time. Wise, we don't want to run out of time. Comment on the situation from verse that and what lessons can we learn? Um, so this is part of the, the what, what happened. This is part of what they were doing in the ship. The ship tackled, they, they, they threw away, away equipment during the, the problem with the storm. Um, there was neither, neither stars nor the sun for many days, so they lost hope. Mm. Uh, and there are some times that we are in a serious situation. Our faith becomes even weak because we look like we're not breaking through. But we just want to know that whatever storms we're going through, God is still in the midst of the storm because he creates the storm. <laughs> he creates the sun, he creates the moon. Um, after long abstinence um, from, from food that they were not eating, that's the way so, as um, uh, Dick Ness Chandler was saying, that sometimes when you don't eat, you feel faint. Mm. But he, he used wisdom to remind them, as our sister, um, Mr. Stewart said that, from the beginning was telling them that you didn't listen to me, but you got to know that, now, that I'm not just an ordinary man. God came, amen. So the confidence from the visit that God came to him, gave him that bonus again to witness to them now. Mm. He gave him that strength to identify himself with his God because he knew that on board of those ships, people had many traditions and beliefs that he was going to tell them that the God I sell is the one who rules the universe. Mm. He was going to use it to witness there on, that, on, on that occasion. And we want to thank God that there was also a praying team in the ship. You go look there, you got Aristarchus, you, you got some other um, safe people who were there that we might not have known, but they were praying. And so God comes in to, to tell them the situation, to control the situation. I see in the situation where Paul, who was a prisoner, now he becomes a captain. He's the one commanding the situation. He's the one encouraging them to it. So it doesn't matter what stance we're going through, God says we are the head, we are not the tail. So we have to be in a place that we can encourage others, as Sister Doreen was saying. Doesn't matter what we're going through. If we are in the Lord, it will help us to encourage others. Um, it was Elisha, yeah, Elisha on his dying bed. The king came to him. So the army said, here, what would I do? And he had to encourage him mm. about what to do in that, in that situation. So as children of God, we will have an advantage being with God. Whatever situation we are in, God gives us wisdom. And I love the way Paul uses the wisdom to talk to them now. Before they wouldn't listen to him, but God has squeezed them out <laughs> that their, their, their mortal people have just, their mortal strength and ego is now all gone. And he could talk to them freely. And he could tell them that your future is certain because I serve a God who holds the future. So these are some of the things that I, I got from that, uh, um, from the, the, the text also. But just to encourage us that whatever storms we're going through, God is the way and he will make a way. Amen. So be of good courage, be of good cheer. We're going through many situations now. Let us, the word of God is coming to encourage us that he is there. He knows what he is doing. He knows what is happening. When you go through the waters, when you go through the fire, all the things that God has spoken to us, let us go back and hold to the word of God again so that we might raise up our heads. Sometimes in situations, our heads are hung down. We can testify. We can, we can praise God as we ought to because we're going through some terrible storms. But God is saying that you lift up your head and praise me. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. So God is encouraging his, us in this time. Whether COVID is hanging over your head door, your, your door, we will bless him. 
whether we're feeling what faint, we will bless him because he is the God of the universe. This is a God whom we serve, as Paul said. Amen? Amen. 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 So be of good cheer and take some courage. That's what I was getting as the Spirit of God was helping me to encourage Zion also. That storms and adverse winds are blowing, but he is in the midst. So be of good courage. Amen. Bless the Lord. What's our next question? Number nine. Number nine. What does it say, please? What type of attempted action did the storm draw from the various people? Yep. When we when we are in a sitting in this situation, people act differently. And it's funny to see the different characters, what happens when we are under pressure, how people react to it. So that's part of what I was I was trying to look at. So what do you have there? Praise the Lord. We got about 10 minutes, so we want to cover it in time, please. Okay, so I've got three bits. Um, if, if you think, well, may, may, lots of people have done psychology in one way or another. And I think make, most of you have heard of the term fight or flight. So yes. it's supposed to be a reaction in, term, in times of fear. Do we fight or do we take flight? And um, we see... I think most of the people there, when I look at verse 29 and 30, there's a lot of fear going on here. Even after Paul had spoken to them and said, fear not and be of good cheer, that, that people were frightened because they felt as if they were going to hit upon a rock. They didn't know where they were. They couldn't see where they were. And so some of them even wanted to jump out. So they wanted, in 30, it said the shipmen were about to, about to flee out of the ship. So I see that was an attempted action. Um, for Paul, I think it builds on what you were just saying. That was my second person I was looking at. I see his boldness. I see him taking authority. And I see him caring, caring for the safety of the souls. And then the last person, verse 43, I see the centurion acting with mercy. Um, yes, he, he was able to do exactly what the soldiers had said. And that's what they probably would have done was to kill them, the yeah. prisoners, rather than let them escape. escape. But um, I see him. I don't know whether the experience with Paul mellowed him or I don't know what, but I see him having an act of mercy there because he wanted to save Paul. That's Amen. It. Amen. Please go on, share. You, is that, you had all the same thing with Sister Pam, everybody? <laughs> I can't find the verse. I'm trying to find the verse, but I saw saw there where they were all pulled together to um to put things over over, over, board. over, over, yeah. over yeah. So I saw a bit of teamwork. Um, good, good, good. In the time of storm, difficulty, trial, yeah, teamwork. So some teamwork there. Amen. Another shout. Mm. Oh, all the points have been covered that you wrote down. Probably it's been covered for me too. I don't know. <laughs> let's let's just have a look. Uh, right. What did I write down? What type of attempted actions did? What type of actions or attempted actions did the storm draw from the various people? I was looking at. Uh, when the ship was undergirded, that is, um, they tried to tie ropes around it so that it doesn't, mm -hmm. so that was part of teamwork that they were doing there to lessen the, 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 the um, to lessen the force that it would bump on the shore, the violence so that it doesn't just break up. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they lowered the sail, they tried that the wind doesn't carry them farther away, so that was kind of teamwork they were doing. Passengers and crews are lighting the ship together. Everything they were throwing 
So a lot of teamwork was going yeah. here, they're working together. Um, abstinence of food, that was from all of them. That's how much they had or sang before. Um, the prayers of the saints to, during this period, those who were there praying. Um, they took the sounding, so they were also yeah. measuring the depth of the sea to yeah. see whether they were close to land. Yeah. Um, more so, um, the sellers were doing this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and then the sellers also tried to jump ship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Obama said, we want to escape for their life and leave everybody. Um, yeah, Paul was there also to encourage all of them. Mm -hmm. And said, look, um, as a minister, he said in one of uh, last two weeks ago, he says, when you are with, the, with God, we, are, we have an advantage. We mm -hmm. have an advantage because God is on our side. And then um, the other action that was happening, the soldiers were planning to kill the, the prisoners mm -hmm. so that they don't escape. So during any commotion or when things are, a lot of things are happening in, in various people's mind, but um, let us know that during that point, we as believers, we just need to stay close to the Lord and don't follow everything that we see with our eyes. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I think the last question was the last one, isn't it? It wasn't so much to be answered. It was just for us to assess where we are at this time. Because sometimes we are good at taking other people's temperature, but we don't take our own temperature. Amen. So, Amen. so yes. this, that's what this one was for. Are you going through a storm in your life now? How would you ride out the storm? Um, it's not so much for us to answer, it's for us to reflect on. And I, will, and I put it out there so that if anybody's going through, through a storm now, who needs prayer, you can make your prayer request and we can pray with you to know that we have teamwork and we can stand with each other. We can hold somebody's hand when they're in their storms so that when we get into ours also, people will be holding our hands up. That's why it was set. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Bless Lord. the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. the Lord Jesus. Amen. So we come to the end of our, our uh, time tonight. But if there's anybody who has a prayer request, this is when you need to bring it up. So we pray as a team. We pray as believers, as a body of Christ, to hold up the hands of one another. Sometimes we suffer alone and we become so personal, but no, no, no. When the devil is roughing you up, you don't need to be personal. Mm -hmm. When you're going through some storms, you don't need to be personal. You need the body.